Do you have resilience? And if there are times that you're feeling like you wish you could tap into that resilience, how are you going to do that? I'm so excited to introduce our next author in this book here, Action Takers Who Get Shit Done, which, by the way, you can get your copy today at actiontakerspublishing.com slash GSD. And while you're over there, go cash in on the free gifts that the authors are bringing up. So I'm going to bring up our first guest today, um, and Marty Winder Adams. We're going to be talking about the book, her relation in the book, and we're going to be talking about resilience as well. So Marty, welcome. I'm so excited to have you in this book because you are the ultimate action taker. And I love being surrounded by action takers. So thanks for being here today and being part of this. Thank you so much, Linda. This is such a privilege to get a chance to be in the book and to speak with you about it. Of course, you know, because this uh, this compilation book, my idea, when I, when I had the idea about it, it was about people being able to pick up the book. They're going through something in their life right now, and they can skim through the different chapters and see what is something that they really need to speak to them right now so that they can take action and take that step forward. And so your chapter is you know, talking about the importance, I love the title, by the way, the importance of building resilience because shit's going to happen. And so why don't you share with us, like, what is this all about? What does resilience mean to you? Because maybe it might mean something different to somebody listening. So what does resilience mean to you? And, and what is that importance of having that? Well, to me, resilience is really about being able to go through the tough times, to have faith in yourself that you can get through it, that you can move forward, and that you're not going to get trapped there um, and, and in that negative mire and just bogged down, but rather rolling with the punches, as they say, and coming out the other side and feeling stronger, like, yeah, I've learned something, I have developed some skills, and this was really an opportunity for me to learn more about myself, my abilities, and my skills. That's it, that's definitely my my idea of resilience. Have you always been a resilient uh, person? Or let me ask a different question. Do you believe that human beings are all resilient or are there some people that just, uh, they just can't get through it? I think there's a different, I think it, it, it's like um, any kind of emotional intelligence. I really believe that everybody has their own level of resilience, but I also think it's something you can work on. So uh, I think what experience you've had in life where life has brought you kind of how, how deep are the valleys you've gone through really has an impact on how resilient you are going forward. But I think in times when things are good, we can work on resilience so that when, when things are become more difficult, we've got that, you know, we've got that muscle built up so we can really exercise it and use it. You know, that's, that brings up a very interesting uh, point in, in my head is that um, there've been different things in my life where they were extremely challenging emotionally, mentally, you know, more, more emotionally than, and mentally than physically. And, and I quit, but then there've been other things that might have been like relating on a scale that might've been somewhat on the same scale, but I kept going and I kept persevering and kept going through it. So what is it that makes us, makes us keep going and makes us quit? I think that's a complicated question. So without getting too psychological, From a complicated person, <laughs> I really, I think there's, there's some key factors about resilience. I think, um, how you see your own ability to manage it. Like if you, if you look at a situation and go, oh my God, this is way bigger than I can control. I've got, you know, I've got no way to handle this. I think that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. I really believe in that. I think that there are some situations where people look at it and go, this is pretty tough, but you know what? I've been through something similar to this, or I know people that have been through this. I can tap into those resources. I have family and friends around me that are going to help me. And that may be a way bigger mountain, but they can see a way to climb it so they get through it. So I think that those that's probably uh, the biggest thing is how do you see the obstacle or the or the challenge or whatever that's in your path? How big How big of a mountain are you making that? Yeah. Oh, that's great. Cause there's, there's an old saying, you know, don't make a mountain out of a mohill, right? Which I don't even know what a mohill is. That must be small or something. A little hill. <laughs> okay. Like a, a little itty bitty hill. Yeah. And, and so what I love how you, you know, what you shared there is, you know, tapping into those in your environment. Not all of us have 
positive, uplifting, motivational, inspirational, you know, people who believe in us. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was in a clubhouse room yesterday and this woman was sharing how, you know, she, she just moved up and moved to New York and her family was like, you're never going to make it there. It's going to be awful. You're going to quit. You're, and that was her family. So not all of us have in our family, the people who are supportive. And so finding people outside of that that can support us and uplift us and help us to move forward. I love how you said that because that's a, I think that's probably one of the greatest ways that I do make it through a lot of those challenging times is by reaching out to others for that help. And, and so how do we find the right people? How do we find those yeah. right people to talk to? Yeah, and I, I think that's, that's a really critical thing because not all of us do have family. I have a very small family. And so, um, you know, it, a lot of times I, I don't have somebody I can just go down the road and talk to and chat with. So I think, how do you, how do you find those people? Number one, I think you need to look for people that are positive and uplifting. If your friends are telling you, ah, oh, you shouldn't try that. There's no way you should do that. Then I think that maybe that's not a friend that needs to be part of your support, your resilience building and support. I, on the other hand, um, I sometimes Paid professionals are the best support people, whether that's a therapist, whether that's a coach, whether that's a mentor. Um, sometimes those people are your best advocate because they don't have they don't have any preconceived ideas. They are there to really help you. That's their job. And if they do it well, then they can build that sense of resilience in you that you're going to use for the rest of your life. So people help you but they can't give you something you don't have. So you have to have a certain amount of um, courage and confidence in yourself as well, which, which you can you know, look back at the successes you've had, even small things that you've accomplished. Those are big things to somebody else. I think that's the other thing we have to remember. Everybody's mountain and molehill is different. Oh boy, that's for darn sure. I've met some people that are doing some absolutely just phenomenally crazy good things that to me, it just seems like Mount Everest, but for them, it's just like, that's just part of their life, you know? And, and I think a lot of times we compare ourselves to those kinds of people. Now you do, you mentioned coaching and so you do divorce coaching. I wanted you to share with us, like, uh, you know, how did you get into that? And what, what does, what does the divorce coach do? Or what do you Marty do? Yeah, I do a little different than some divorce coaches do. So uh, first of all, thank you for that. Uh, Linda, divorce coaching is recognized by the American Bar Association as an alternative form of dispute resolution. It's not really um, quite that official. What it is, is it's really a person who has some experience. Um, some divorce coaches are attorneys. I am not. I am a mediator. Uh, but what I do is I work with women who are pre to post divorce and really help them to look at what do they want to do, where are the challenges that they're experiencing, what are the resources that they can tap into, and then what's a plan to help them get through the divorce so when they walk out the other side, they feel good about themselves, they know they made the right decisions for them for their current situation and for their future. And like I always say, so that they have an optimistic way of looking into the future and going, I'm going to be a great single woman and maybe someday I'll have another relationship, but this divorce is not going to define me. That's really my goal. Awesome. I love that. It's so important because when I was going through my divorce, I was 21 at the time. You know, I didn't even, I know there were mediators, but I didn't know what a mediator was. So, you know, I think the lack of education out there in that environment is, you know, having that education, being able to make decisions that are going to best suit you is important. And then, like you mentioned earlier, finding the right coach, one that you resonate with, because if that person, um, that, you know, so there could be somebody who is a coach. But if they grate against your nerves, it's probably not going to serve you the way you really need it to. And then them having that compassion and understanding for your situation. I imagine being a divorce coach that um, that Marty uh, dropped off. Oh, I'm not sure what happened, but I, I'm just going to say, I, I imagine you know, being a divorce coach. There must be a lot to that where you do have to have that sort of empathy for you know, the person who's on the other end knowing what they're going through, understanding them, understanding their situation, their life, their, um, you know, whatever it is that's going on with them. So what we're going to do right now is I'm going to just go to a really quick commercial break and I'll be right back.
one of the things that I've personally um, found from my from my experience of working with action tag publishing is that I've walked away with more friends than I had before because um, of the relationship that you build with the authors um, while you know working in an anthology I think it's a it's an amazing project to be able to get published it's a it's a it's a fantastic way to get published the first time and I, I I've almost seen people who get hooked on doing anthologies because once that bug is bitten um, you you feel like you can release more and more and more and more stories and uh, and Linda's got a bunch of titles that I think resonates with a lot of us who live in the real world <laughs> Here we are talking about the book Action Takers Who Get Shit Done. And Marty, oh my gosh, that was so, so funny because we had a problem the last time we tried to record this. And then you just suddenly disappeared. And I was like, I don't know what happened. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but I figured it out. You know, I went to a quick commercial, we came back, and that's what we do, right? We just figure out what needs to happen. And here we are. And, and so what was what I was talking about there was you know having empathy, you know, empathy for your clients in the type of work you do. There are some fields that having empathy is extremely important. And especially I imagine in this type of field, because for people to get to that divorce stage, it doesn't typically happen like, oh, they said one thing wrong and I'm divorcing them. I mean, usually we try to work it out at least a little while. So by the time they've gotten to this divorce stage, they're you know a little bit raw and Maybe there are some like some unknowns that are coming. And so what is that like for you to work with people and you know, having that empathy? I, I know you're empathetic. I do know that. And so like, how how does that play into the work that you do as a divorce coach? Well, I think it's really I think it's critical because, you know, your attorney in a divorce is there to represent you legally and they are not necessarily the the person that is going to Kind of give you that sense of okay i can do this i can handle that and that's not their job so i want to be really clear about that some attorneys are better at it than others um and you know a therapist doesn't provide you with legal services and doesn't necessarily step you through the day-to-day -day stuff that you have to address during the divorce the coach is the middle person in between those two so not providing legal not providing mental health but really helping you manage the day-to-day -day stuff and being empathetic and being able to say, you know, it's okay to have a bad day. If you need to go sit and have a bubble bath for a half an hour tonight just to de-stress, take it. Do that self-care routine. Take care of yourself. Be kind to yourself. Because it's a really challenging um, part of life. As a matter of fact, you were talking about most people don't decide on a whim to go through a divorce. The research says most women wait a, two years, 18 months to two years before they decide to, have, to actually leave a relationship so there's a lot of second guessing and there's a lot of should i have tried something else and what could i have done differently and it, until you can work through all that stuff you can't really work move forward with your life and that's another part of resilience right getting through personal challenges it's not just business challenges that can happen so yeah oh so true and um, it's interesting you mentioned the 18 months to two years because I, my first marriage was two years long and I probably did spend that 18 months trying to decide to divorce, you know, the first six months were a little, it was like hell on earth. Well, the whole two years was, but yeah, so th thanks for sharing that. And you know, this, so you have something else you want to share before we, we have to wrap up because this is, you know, we're doing 15 minutes and man, the time sure does fly. And I, I love what you, I love what you do for people because when I was, again, when I was going through my, my divorce, you know, I was young, I was 21 at the time and I just didn't know, I didn't know. And so having somebody like you in your corner to help you through it, to help you through the situation, the divorce itself, the um, communication, right. Being able to mediate. Why don't you um, share briefly, what does a mediator what does it mean to be a mediator and what do they do in this type of situation? So a mediator technically is a third party that helps facilitate the communication or negotiations in any kind of dispute. So 
if I'm working in a family dispute, I am a neutral third party in the room and there'll be the husband and perhaps his attorney on one side, the wife and her attorney on the other side. And then I, I facilitate that communication. Um, in when I do mediation work with my clients, I, my divorce clients, I am preparing them to go into the mediation. So how do they get emotionally prepared so that they can have that logical mindset to be able to make decisions? What do they want to get out? How will they, what do they need to have when they walk out of that room to know they got a good deal and don't feel like I got screwed in this, in this mediation? Cause that happens. If you don't know what you want, you, you say, yeah, I'll just take that offer. And then you walk out the door and go, this isn't enough money. I can't possibly live on this or whatever, you know, it may be. So I really help yeah. prepare people for the mediation so that they're mentally and physically equipped and emotionally equipped to go in there and um, really be present and get what they need to get out of that negotiation. That's great. You know, I was in the legal field for 20 years. So, you know, knowing that there's that distinction, like you mentioned about, you know, lawyers as opposed to mediators and really having somebody on your side who's there for you, especially through the emotional, mental aspect of it, because that's what will oftentimes hang on to us for years to come. You know, having the fight to get the divorce is one thing, but after the divorce is over, there's still stuff that might show up. And so having somebody, again, on your side while you're going through the process might um, lessen or, or eliminate that stuff on the other side of the divorce. So I highly recommend you know, reaching out to Marty. Again, you, you can find her at, she's a divorce coach number four women dot com divorce coach for women dot com go connect with her marty what is like one thing that you would like our audience or our readers to take away from reading the book action takers who get shit done one thing you'd like them to take away from when reading that book one thing that i think is in all the chapters that i have read i haven't quite read them all but most of them is you have to put yourself out there you have to take this the leap you have to take the plunge you have to make the first step and don't sit there and, and have to have everything perfect before you do it. Because if you do that, you're never going to get any shit done. you got to just jump out there and get it done. <laughs> done is better than perfect, right? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, thank you so much for being here. And if you um, are interested in joining us in one of our collaboration books, we have a whole bunch of them that we're working on right now. Currently, as of the taping of this, 11 different books that we're working on. And we have a discount of 30% off through September 21st of 2023. Go to actiontakerspublishing.com slash author. Check it out. See what we have to offer you and, and sign up if it's something you want to do. If you have questions about it, reach out to me. Marty, thanks so much for being here. I truly appreciate you. And we have another book you're in that's going to be coming out really soon. No Problem Parenting. We'll be talking about that one later as well. And we'd love for you guys to check that one out. Thank you so much, Marty, for being here. Thank you, Linda. It's wonderful. Let's see. Let's go. Sabrina. Let's, let's hear from Sabrina. I want to thank these ladies. Many of them I never knew before the book. And now I know them. So it took an entire team to make this work. As you said, Sally, winning in those categories, neither, none of us did it on our own. It was a collaborative effort. We've got Dionne Roberts from the UK. I'm sure you'll hear from her in a moment. But for me, and I've been uh, publishing, I have a solo book. I have a couple other book collaborations. But this was a unique experience because from start to finish, Everything was in motion. The method of communication, no author left behind, you know, for some that may have struggled in getting their chapters done or slide them in under the wire. And everyone was treated equally the same. It didn't matter who you were and how many books you'd written. And Shanna's shaking her head about that because it didn't matter. We're all doing this together. So I love this, this unity and this community of us all getting there together and having the tools and everything that we need, all of them, the uh, marketing materials are phenomenal. Like, it's like, I'm going to just say this. It feels like the Super Bowl. You know, there's two teams playing, but only one team's going to win, but they have to have the marketing materials ready. So I watched the Super Bowl right after. There goes the Rams with all the, you won, you won. Of course, you know, they had to have the other team ready also. Well, this team was ready. 
they were ready with the number one stickers. And I guess, you know, halfway through the day, here we are getting our marketing materials with the number one Amazon sticker on it. I, who does that? Action Takers Publishing does it. <laughs> I love it. I mean, I'm like, I'm holding that close to my chest. I'm going to be using those those uh, pictures for, for you know, <laughs> years to come. But to just have it all ready and prepared because you know what, Sally? You guys believed in us. Yep. You believed we were going to hit number one. And I love it. I'll take this try it again. Thank you. And, and the fact that you got your whole family involved too. Yes, so. yes. My husband's involved. You know, we had to work some appointments around this. As a matter of fact, I've got one after this. He was so kind to put, you know, his something that's very important to him on hold. So I'll be doing that. And I and I schedule something before it. I do run a business. I scheduled all those things around that. But today this calendar said book launch. And my husband was so kind to work with me and eat his dinner around all of this too. <laughs> he had to wait, but he was so patient. So it takes, you know, if you're in a household and it's more than just you, they have to be a part of the process. They have to be a part of this. It is community, community at home.